Taiwanese snacks have a big reputation. They're not just popular with locals. They're a must-try for any tourist in Taiwan. The history of Taiwan snacks is inextricably linked with the country's crops. For example, oyster omelets, ba wan meatballs, rice cakes are all made with sweet potatoes, which became popular in Taiwan due to rice shortages. Today, we begin a three-part series on the evolution of Taiwanese snacks. Steamed, boiled, fried, deep-fried, dozens of well-known street foods make up the taste of Taiwan we know and love. Milky white oysters sizzle on a teppanyaki grill. Egg is drizzled on, sometimes bean sprouts, and then a special sauce thickened with cornstarch. A garnish of leaves, a flip, a final sizzle, and a delicious oyster pancake is served. My grandma says that in the old days they were called yandai. They were made of simple local ingredients, bean sprouts, vegetables, some sweet potato flour added in, mixed together and fried into a pancake shape. Later, when they had oysters, because they produce oysters here in Anping, they added the oysters in, making the oyster pancakes we have today. According to local legend in Tainan's Anping, when Zhen Chenggong army landed here in 1661, making an attack on the Dutch colonists, the Chinese army ran out of rations. Zhen's army made a sauce with local ground sweet potatoes to avoid starvation. They deep fried the batter with local foods, greens, and meats to make jian de. These cakes helped the army regain their strength and win Fort Zeelandia from the Dutch. In the late Qing dynasty, they had foods like oyster pancakes. We see in the documents that on the coast of China's Fujian and Guangdong provinces, they had those kinds of foods. But following migration, when they came to new places, these foods evolved. But these ingredients are put together in very different ways, making their taste and appearance differ greatly from the Taiwanese oyster pancake. In Chaoshan, they make oyster bakes, which are really bakes. They mix the oysters, sweet potato powder, salt and chilies together and bake them like a flat cake. More unusually, in Malaysia, they first make a cake made of the batter and egg. Then they put that to one side and stir fry the oyster. Then they mix the cake and the oyster and they eat it with chili sauce on top. For Taiwanese oyster pancakes, the quality of the pancake hinges on this vital batter sitting in a bowl by the grill. We make ours with pure sweet potato powder with some simple seasonings. The water ratio is about 1 to 3. You go by experience. Of course, you need the right heat level. Sweet potato flour is a staple made of sweet potato starch that is used to thicken sauces. Sweet potatoes were more readily available than rice in Taiwan's early agricultural society. In 1603, Chinese Ming Dynasty scholar Chen Di wrote in Dong Fan Ji that Taiwan had onions, ginger, and sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes have been a staple in Taiwan since the 17th century, but sweet potatoes don't keep long after harvesting. In 1921, Japanese writer Aiwa Kataoka noted in the Journal of Taiwanese Customs that people would grind up sweet potato peelings, add water and let it thicken and dry to create a powder that kept for long periods. In some villages, they would add lots of ingredients to the sweet potato powder to make a food they considered very delicious. Even if they just added very simple pickled radish, they still thought it was delicious. Sweet potato-based sauces have a different consistency from those made of the more traditional arrowroot, and even from potato starch, making sweet potato a good choice for the wrapping of many snacks. The search for the perfect chewy texture became a feature of Taiwanese snack culture. Mm. 
Taiwanese meatballs or ba wan. Ba wan boasts shiny, translucent skin and springy, chewy texture, making them the quintessential sweet potato flour based snack. The chewy ba wan skin is dipped in sweet sauce or simple drizzled in thick soy sauce, a tempting aroma and a perfect bite. The proportion of sweet potato to rice paste is a key factor in adjusting the texture of a ba wan. More sweet potato flour makes a ba wan more translucent and chewy. That's the ideal texture for Zhang Hua's traditional ba wan makers. Zhang Hua is Later, the sweet potato was selectively bred, so people in Changhua City started to make ba wan with lots of sweet potato and not add rice paste anymore. But outside of Changhua City, such as in Lugang, Yuanling, elsewhere in Changhua County, or even farther north, they have rice in their ba wan and they add sweet potato to the rice. Taiwanese ba wan are cooked in two main styles, southern style steamed and northern style deep fried. Zhanghua northern style deep fried is more common. Steam them until they're hot and separate. Put them in cold oil and warm it gently, not so hot that they form a skin. Gently fry them until they're soft and they're done. Ba wan have thick skins, they just have a little filling inside. But the feeling is very aromatic, and its scent gets better the more you chew. There are many types of ba wan across Taiwan. Zhanghua ba wan are large, disc shaped, and often filled with mushrooms or bamboo shoots, or sometimes even salted duck egg. Ito ba wan are also filled with pork and bamboo shoots, but they're triangular, just one hand big, and served in pairs. Ba wan from Puli and Nanto are eaten in a special way. Locals like to start by eating the skin, leaving the filling and sauce in the bowl, then pouring on a big bone broth to drink it as a soup. In the south, in Tainan, Kaohsiung, and Pingdong, it's all about the ba wan steamed in clear broth. Taiwan has developed many different types of ba wan, but which one was the first? How can we spot a beidou ba wan? It should have a mark on the back, like three fingers and the bottom of it should look something like a map of Taiwan. That makes it an authentic Beidou Ba Wan. Beidou Ba Wan are wrapped by hand, which results in three marks that indicate the authentic Beidou Ba Wan. This technique is an old fan family tradition. It was written in 1930, that means, before Mr. Fan, people were already selling ba wan on shoulder poles. So I can say for sure that by the 1930s, roast ba wan were being sold in Zhanghua City. They were using the word ba wan. When Zhanghua's ba wan were first recorded in written documents, the Fan family's beidou ba wan were called fen wan. They contained fillings like dried pickled radish until World War II ended in 1945, when the fans began putting pork in their fen wan, marking the birth of what we call Beidou Ba Wan and Zhanghua Ba Wan have one important difference. In Beidou, they still make Ba Wan by hand. They form the balls, put them in a steamer, set the shape, and then deep fry them. Normally, in Zhanghua, in smaller towns under its influence, they use a mold for Ba Wan to press them into a disc shape. Ten caddies of Arabica rice are stirred in this bucket to create a thick sauce, unlike in Zhanghua, where chewiness is king. The makers of southern clear broth streamed ba wan prefer a higher proportion of Arabica rice in their ba wan skin. Bamboo steam baskets keep the moisture better. If you use metal baskets, the steam escapes very fast. When the steam is gone, the ba wan won't be so wet and juicy. They won't be so good, they'll be a bit dry. Our ba wan are not like the fried ones. They get deep fried after the steaming, but ours do not. If we don't hold on to the steam, the ba wan will be too dry and not good. Ba wan differ in cooking techniques, and cooks have also brought a lot of creativity to the taste of their ba wan using lots of varied local ingredients. 
In Shenzhou, the Hakka town of Beipu produced a special using traditional Hakka flavors, baowan, with leaves and pork. In the baowan stores of Miaoli, one finds Hakka baowan with dried bean curd. In Tainan, in a bustling street market once known as Sekariba, founded in the Japanese era, they invented clear steamed shrimp baowan. At this well-established store in Pingdong, the skin contains burdock, a flavor from Guilai, the homeland of the store owner's wife. Then one day, one of the kids wrote in a school essay, what are the specialties of Guilai? He wrote, Guilai specialties are burdock and bawan. I thought, huh, it's not a bad idea. Even if it does come from a school essay. So I put the burdock and bawan together. Hundreds of years ago, to stave off famine, people first started grinding up sweet potato into a powder. What was once just a way to fill the stomach changed with Taiwan's economic growth, gradually picking up lots of local twists to become one of modern Taiwan's favorite dishes. <laughs>